Simplification number three and, and how to possibly avoid relabeling. There, there's a bit of a history about this. And this is a, a method that's kind of evolved uh, for me. And uh, again, another article was written about this some time back and I bounced it off a few key people in the industry. Uh, you know, make sure, hey, am I overstepping anything here? And they said, actually, it's, it's a very good strategy. So, so here's what I have for this simplification. In NFPA 70, as many of you know, you're required to go back and, and revisit the labels, the analysis, uh, the study, at intervals not to exceed five years, or if there's any kind of a, a significant change that could affect the results. And I, I look at affecting the results, meaning could it affect the PPE that you wear, or maybe the arc flash boundary, where perhaps that may uh, need to be increased, for example. If it, if it decreases, don't worry about it. But, but if it increases, yeah, that, that would affect your practices. And so for this method, one of the first things that I look at is the arc flash boundary. You know, yeah, the arc flash boundary triggers where you have to put on your arc rated PPE. But I mean, if you're going to be performing energized work, well, you're going to be doing that anyway. Other than that, the arc flash boundary is to keep the unprotected people back a certain distance. And so one way to look at this, instead of you know, having that distance at exactly 1.2 calories per square centimeter, which is actually the true definition of it, maybe adopt a larger standardized arc flash boundary. And I actually first introduced this concept back around 2004. It was at a conference that I was speaking at. And I mentioned, you know, just select eight or 10 feet or something, you know, large. And a few people looked at me like, well, isn't that kind of extreme? And I said, well, it really only affects the person that doesn't belong there. So just Get them out of the way. Uh, and it, it does maybe affect where you're going to put on your PPE once you're getting into the area. But as I said, you know, once you open the doors and, and you have the arc flash hazard, you're, you're doing that anyway. And so eight, 10 feet, not such a bad way to go. You might think, well, technically, that's not the arc flash boundary because that's not exactly where 1.2 calories a square centimeter is. And I, I agree. So maybe call it standardized. But the, um, the PPE category table in NFPA 70E does something similar. In the table, they give you an arc flash boundary, and that, that's for a specific set of conditions. Your conditions, that arc flash boundary is probably going to be uh, maybe a little bit less, like like it would be if you adopt this standardized boundary. So that's one step. And then another step is list the arc rating of the PPE and the missing link here, the working distance. So you would have the arc flash boundary, a large arc flash boundary, maybe call it standardized if, if you know, that helps. And then the arc rating. And what's missing, and this is not in 70E, but it's the working distance associated with the arc rating. So if you have, let's say, a minimum arc rating that you're going to wear of eight calorie per square centimeter PPE, you want a certain distance defined with that. Just saying eight calories, uh, that doesn't limit somebody from walking right up and getting right up on top of the equipment. That's not the idea. And, you know, some people may look at this like, well, well I don't, I don't quite get it. Well, there's, there's an analogy, a parallel to this, and it's a very simple parallel. Again, back to uh, equipment interrupting ratings, like circuit breakers, fuses, and so forth. That really is uh, kind of parallel to how you handle a short circuit study. In a short circuit study, the protective devices, the equipment, they have a fixed interrupting rating. And all the short circuit study does is, it, is it, it's a set of calculations in a report to just document, are all those listed interrupting ratings adequate, period. And so that's kind of a similar strategy here. Most are going to uh, standardize on some type of, a, a, a we call it a daily wear arc rating, could be 8 calories, 12 calories, you know, some, somebody's going to decide that. And so the arc flash study is really just validating where is that eight calorie rating going to be sufficient? Kind of like comparing to uh, a circuit breaker or, or fuse interrupting ratings. And it makes it so much simpler. Now, you want to add the working distance. I can't emphasize that enough. That's not required in 70E. But my view is you need to know that arc rating, what, what distance that's associated with. And then, of course, the shock hazard. Now, what makes this so much simpler is when you perform an arc flash study, you're going to have a certain incident energy uh, based at a certain working distance. You're going to have an arc flash boundary. And someday, you may go back and review, revisit, rerun the analysis. And when that happens, 
numbers can change. Short circuit currents may go up or down. Clearing times may go up or down. And the, the incident energy in the arc flash boundary may go up or down. And so technically, if you actually listed the actual arc flash boundary, the calculated value, and the calculated value of incident energy, and it goes up or down, someone may debate that, you know, we really need to go back and look at this and uh, maybe review the labels, maybe replace the labels. Well, if you had this simplified label, as long as your calculated arc flash boundary is still within whatever you have on the label, eight or 10 feet or whatever you decide, then the label's still good. As long as your calculated incident energy at a specific distance is still less than whatever arc rating you have on the label, the label's still good. And you know, then, then there may be the question about, okay, so let's say we do this. How, how do we address you know, that, that we are uh, revalidating the label? We're saying we reviewed it, everything's still okay. We use a maintenance sticker. Use a simple maintenance sticker, much like you use with equipment. You know, the, the format, that's up to you. But just put a sticker out there that says, hey, we, uh, we reviewed this, or someone reviewed it, and the date. And basically, that gets the clock ticking again for the next review cycle. There may be exceptions in using a large standardized arc flash boundary. This, this is one of them. You know, if you have a situation where trying to keep people 10 feet away is gonna block pedestrian traffic, especially here. But overall, it's a strategy that some have been using. And as I said, it, it does greatly simplify the, uh, the labeling and the need for relabeling. And so at, at the end of the day, the label, is to advise you of what the hazards are and how to protect yourself from the hazards. That was actually uh, arc flash testing I did quite a few years ago. That I, I got involved with um, actually uh, the country of Japan, uh, the Fukushima earthquake. There was a, a nuclear plant that had a pretty massive fire. It wasn't the one that was in the news all the time. And so I uh, got involved with the uh, the government and uh, basically we did, we did some some pretty uh, pretty impressive testing that wasn't even the most impressive one the most impressive one uh, just about burned the lab down uh, it was a it was a good time